Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here for WeAreChange.org and the Syrian state media, and believe me, there is little doubt that this is actually happening, is reporting that air defenses have struck down Israeli missiles at the, or near the, Damascus airport. And why the Damascus airport? Well, they're still claiming that this is where, you know, the Iranians are... are taking missiles, bringing them to Lebanon. Let's just read this one, and then we're actually going to show you the missile strike getting thwarted. But this conflict is so close to being red hot, and we're going to explore that in this video. Syrian military air defense downed several missiles that Israel fired in an act of aggression near Damascus Airport on Saturday, Syrian state media said. An Israeli military spokeswoman said Israel does not comment on foreign reports does not comment on foreign reports. Well, the video evidence is pretty clear. Um, this does not look like a U.S. strike, thank God. Um, however, the United States, we're going to get into the military, the insane mili military drills the Marines just did there in Syria in depth and how dangerous those are. Oh, during the more than seven-year conflict in neighboring Syria, Israel has grown deeply alarmed by the expanding cloud of its arch enemy Iran, a key ally of Syrian President Bashir al-Assad. Israel's air force has struck scores of targets, uh, as it describes them, as Iranian deployments of arms transfers to Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah movement in the war. Our air defense systems thwarted an Israeli missile aggression on Damascus International Airport, Syrian state. News agency SANA cited a military... Uh, sources saying so. Now, remember, it's pretty open. This is an article from July here. Our goal is to push Iran out of Syria. That is not the only goal. We know this. The goal is to get Bashir al-Assad out of there. They want Assad out of there. That's it. They want a pro-Western, pro-Saudi Arabian leader in that nation. It's that simple. That's the reality of the situation. In fact, Tulsi Gabbard was recently on Jimmy Dore's show, and she was openly talking about this is what they want, talking about our forces and how it makes her sick to her stomach, that they're training with Al-Qaeda. We're, we're renaming them rebels, just like we renamed them from being the Mujahideen, the freedom fighters that we were once allied with. And then, you know, somehow we use these semantic games, and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So let's watch the missile strike here. Adox, thank you so much for the super chat. Keeping us in uh, in business here. Let's see. Watch Syrian air defense repel Israeli airstrike. And this is Sputnik News. So this is, you know, state-run media. But again, folks, take a look. Um, knocking this one right here out of the sky. Not a lot of action, but at least we're not seeing explosions and death. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that want to see explosions and death for some reason in these regions. I don't. I don't. I don't care if it helps win an election. Well, he said if they went into Idlib, he'd, go, he'd strike. Trump would strike. There you go. There's another boom knocked out of the air. So obviously, you know, these aren't just military reports. This is extremely frightening. Think to yourself, if you live there, if you were in that region, if you were in Idlib, all right, and now you have U.S.-backed Syrian forces entering uh, a village held by ISIS. Now, these are the same forces that just trained with our Marines. And when you see that video, my God. My God. Now, they're saying that um, they have to go in because uh, ISIS is strong there, and they just killed uh, 20 freedom fighters. So now we have to go back in. U.S.-backed forces now have to go into that village. They want the quagmire. They want to be in there again as long as it takes to take out Assad. And this escalation is so dangerous that I don't understand how anybody with any legitimacy could promote this. The big boys are playing. Russia is very heavily involved in that. We're going to get that in a minute. In fact, so Russian state media is saying this, the thing you just read in the New York Post, they're saying it was a pretext staged by white helmets. So the U.S. 
can attack Syria. Put those boots on the ground, if you will. Okay? And again, when you have Marines drilling in Syria with the rebels, what else do you call it? And here's that right here. And, and uh, you know, this, this is some jaw-dropping stuff. For our mission, we conduct a company-sized tilt rotor insert into an LZ in Syria, establish a defense, and we're preparing to launch a demonstration. My name is Sergeant Matt Yannick. I'm an infantry squad leader with 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, India Company. And look how dramatic the footage is. This is some well-cut stuff, very well produced. Talk about propaganda. Okay, and by the way, the article says the re only reason they're doing this is because the terrain at uh, 29 Palms, where they'd usually train, isn't rough enough. That's not what this is about. This is, again, preparing our Marines with the rebels who are Al-Qaeda, who supposedly attacked us on 9-11 and are our supposed enemies, but not anymore, in Syria to fight ISIS. It's nuts. And they're on the ground with them in this exercise. Slow motion. We are the security for this cop. We're responsible for keeping everybody and all our operations inside here safe because you never know if and when an attack can come. Dun, 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 dun. I don't want to get the, uh, the video pulled for copyright reasons or, or anything like that, but, you know, you know well, let's, let's play it without the sound. Look, look at this. Look, look how shot this is. Again, training with the Syrian forces, our Marines in Syria. Do you understand how dangerous this is? All right? Now, Putin, as we've talked about, is getting involved. And he's getting involved big time. He's concerned. He's concerned. And he's so concerned that they just had the largest military exercises off the coast with China. And, you know, Eurasia is a very unstable place right now when world powers like Russia are drilling in a manner they never have before. And the Marines are on the ground in Syria, and there's only one town left. One small province. I mean, it's a large province. I don't want to trivialize the size of it. But this is it. This is it. Everybody else is gone. This would mean bye-bye USA. We, we lose another one of these quagmire-esque wars, especially when Russia comes in. You remember when Russia was stepping in at the very, very end of the Obama administration and said, no, you know, we'll, we'll start to fight ISIS. All of a sudden, ISIS wasn't the biggest problem in the world anymore. All of a sudden, they were getting driven back. And now, they're in such a small area... But has the conflict gotten smaller? No, it's only grown and gotten larger. And that is why you have airstrikes near Damascus <laughs> being thwarted. And Israel, you know, they've hit over 200 targets in the last year. You just don't hear about it. You think they're going to be broadcasting this on CNN? Huh? You think they're going to show you the footage? You know, again, Twitter, be an open platform. Without you, this type of information does not get out there. You know, are these videos going to be played ad nauseum? No, they're not. And it's not going to be a panel of people talking about how we should get out of this conflict, get out of this war. No, we need to stop Assad before he uses chemical weapons on his people. And, you know, Lou Dobbs in the past has done some pretty good work, okay? They relegated him to Fox Business. Uh, you know, he told a lot of the truth um, regarding our economy, regarding globalization. But here he has Jack Keane, a retired general, somebody who has been whispered about to supersede James Mattis, our current defense secretary, lying and lying and lying again about chemical weapons and how they know Assad has used chemical weapons. There's not a question. Just like Nikki Haley getting up before the UN and declaring they're, they're readying, we know they're readying a chemical attack as they always do. As they, like, like it benefits them in any manner. Any manner. But here it is. He'll tell you. For a moment. The president, though, being clear, 
uh, that the United States would retaliate. He wasn't specific in what manner. Uh, if the Assad again uses chemical weapons, uh, how reliable again. is the judgment on chemical weapons? How how do we uh, how how confident are you that we have the ability to make that determination uh, without a doubt? No, I'm confident about it, um, and we we've, we've been accurate at every time that right. we've called it. What well, we've been accurate every time we've called it, Lou. Every time we've called it, we've been accurate. What? What? The most recent non-chemical attack, as in no attack occurring, is proof that's a lie. Okay? And again, when people did start following where those weapons came from, it didn't go back to Assad. Okay? Okay, Jackie, let's bring it back one more time. I want to loop it, because Lou, Lou, we got to get a little better at this, man. We got we to gotta start calling out the nonsense. Here it is again. A difficult moment. The president, though, being clear uh, that the United States would retaliate, he wasn't specific in what manner, uh, if the Assad again uses chemical weapons, uh, how reliable is the judgment on chemical weapons? How, how, do we, uh, how, how confident are you that we have the ability to make that determination uh, without a doubt? No, I'm confident about it. Um, and we've, we've been accurate at every time that right. we've called it. Um, you know, follow-on inspections have come up with the same answer that we did in our preliminary analysis. So, you know, any airplane that takes off in Syria, we have full visibility of the thing running down the runway. I don't need to get into, you know, how much surveillance and military presence you have in Syria. I already understand that, Mr. Keene. Um, but your preliminary analysis, your preliminary analysis has always been correct. So again, the preliminary analysis that we're hearing that they're readying a chemical attack, that must be correct. Good thing we have all those Marines there training with the rebels. And good thing this attack just happened by ISIS where we sent those rebels we just trained in the drill two days ago in. Hmm. Just all coincidence, I guess. Folks, this is, uh, this is my plea to you people. We need to get the real information out there. We need to be brutally honest and respectful with our brothers and sisters in the military industrial complex, whether they are, you know, somebody in the army, whether they work for a defense contractor. I'm looking at you, Raytheon. After all, we're finding that your bombs are the ones that are hitting school children in Yemen based on targets that the U.S. has a big say in. And that's a problem. Okay, that's a problem. We need to get out of these nations. And that was one of the big reasons that I voted for Trump. He said we were getting out. And before this all picked up again, just before that last fake chemical attack, Jack Keane, Lou Dobbs, James Mattis, I'm looking at all you guys. And I'm looking at you too, Trump, because you know it was fake too. And you bought into it. And before that, you were saying it's time to leave. It's time to get out. Well, it's time to leave and it's time to get out right now, okay? We can't be having missiles being struck down near airports as Marines are training in this country and Russia is holding the largest scale war games off the coast of Asia while Putin is watching big time. Big time. So, folks, get this video out to people. I appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, Luke and I will be back with further analysis of this situation as it heats up. Ho hopefully uh, nothing larger goes on, or maybe we'll take the airwaves uh, today later. Uh, but we will be broadcasting Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, as we do every week. As always, folks, thank you so much for watching, and be the change you want to see in the world.